Hey, Phil. Yeah. How would you describe yourself? Uh, I've got the perfect word. Um, it's, it's, it's here somewhere. Um, just hold on a sec. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. Organised. <laughs> Hi, guys. By the end of this video, you guys will know exactly what to do to improve your vocabulary on your own. Definitely. My name is Phil. And I'm Michael. And you're watching the Arts Grind. Remember to like and subscribe. Okay, so um, what is the best way to learn vocabulary? A vocabulary notebook. Yeah. <laughs> to be more organized than I am. Yeah. It's, it's true. That was ridiculous. Yeah, that's crazy. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, um, you're going to be trying to boost your vocabulary in order to get a better score in the IELTS. And it is actually one of the hardest things to do when you're learning a new it language. It takes the most time. It does take a long time. But you can be more organized with your study and rather than do what I did, which is forget words, you'll have it very clearly in front of you. So it's let's talk true. about that. It's true. So Phil, what, how do most people try to learn new vocabulary? Well, in the olden days, uh, the way that people were taught was to learn lists of vocabulary. I see kids do this on the train here, on the uh, metro system. It's just, it's not effective because it's in one ear and out the other. There's, yeah. there's no retention. Do no. You, do you, and there's also no context. That's you, it. You, you also don't know how to use the word. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, there's so many problems with that method. Um, yeah. And this, what we're going to teach you about today, how to make a good vocab notebook, helps get around those problems. Yeah. Now, first things first, the reason why lists are so bad are all the things that we just said, but also because you only see it when you read it once. To, yes. to learn a new word, you need to see it at least 26 times yeah, at before least. it's in your head. Yeah, and I know that sounds like, oh, 26 times, I don't have time for 26 times for every word in the English language. But there's a really easy way to do this, in addition to the notebook, which is reading. Yes. It's not a secret. Yeah. R reading is the best way to, to learn vocabulary because you see it in context. You see collocations, which are words that often go together Definitely. with that word. You, you see how to use it. You see sentences that use it. Yeah. You, see, you can guess the meaning. And there's that really weird uh, thing where you learn a new word and you see it everywhere. Guarantee yeah. you've learned a word this week and you will see it everywhere in the next couple of weeks. And it just it really opens up the thing. I, I do have a story about this. Mm. There was one word when I was learning very basic French and I had no idea what it was. I couldn't figure it out. It was uh, la semaine. And I was like, what does that mean? Any idea? La semaine. La semaine. Uh, and you saw it everywhere? Everywhere. It's a very common word. This might take away a while. It, it just means week, as in uh. Monday to Friday, you know, run, Monday okay. to Sunday. And it just suddenly, I learned that word and just it, I understood so many more conversations. It's that kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, we were but talking about this. Did you know how to use it at that point? I, I did because I, I'd heard it so often. I was picking it out of conversations, right? But and would you have felt comfortable saying it? No, it took a while because I was, I was hearing it. So I was using my receptive skills, right? Mm -hmm. I was hearing it a lot in conversations. And then after a while, it kind of clicked what it meant. And I would say after a couple of weeks, I started using it. I was a very low level at this stage. And this is a really common thing. This is how people learn. Mm -hmm. they, everyone has two vocabularies. They have their receptive skills vocabulary, which is... So receptives are your listening and your reading skills. And then there's also your productive skill vocabulary, mm -hmm. which is your... Your speaking and writing. Exactly. And which one do you think is bigger? As in more... Yeah, which vocabulary is bigger? Oh, well, you're definitely receptive. Yeah. Exactly, because that's what you can understand on sight or by hearing. Now, reading, like we said, is mm. the best way to put words into your receptive skills vocabulary. However, it doesn't necessarily help your productive skills vocabulary. Oh, yeah. And that's what the vocab notebook is for. The vocab notebook is a tool that you use to bring your word from your receptive skills vocabulary to your productive skills vocabulary. The best way to do that is by using the word. Using the word so that you're more comfortable using it. Now, you could go out and use it when you're speaking, which is true, that's one way to do it. Yeah. Um, but if you use a vocabulary notebook, it's safer. You're yeah. basically practicing using it on your own time, at your own pace. 
it's, it's as if you're going to have a performance when you're going to reveal the new words you've learned. And this is all the dress rehearsals beforehand. <laughs> and then the big night where you use it perfectly. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. almost like that, right? Yes. So should we get into it? How do we use a notebook? How should we organize it? OK. First of all, I highly recommend that you guys get a pretty nice notebook. Spend some money on this notebook so that if you don't use it, you feel guilty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of students, they get a notebook, but then they, they don't follow up with using it. And yeah. this doesn't help them. So don't get one of those free ones from one <laughs> Don't find one on the street. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Second thing is that, all right, I have a question for you. If your boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife is ugly, do you want to look at them? I mean, I know you're going to lie and say, of course, because I love them. But we're friends. <laughs> it's you, okay. you can tell us the truth. This is a safe place. Yeah, it's they won't no, hear. right? It's a no. <laughs> it's a no. Because they're ugly, right? So it's the same with your vocab notebook. If you have an ugly vocab notebook that only has one word or it only has lists, yeah. you're not going to want to look at it. So make sure it's a fancy notebook and that you are making it beautiful as you are writing it. Use clean yeah. handwriting, use different colors. Yeah. yeah. Don't spill tea on it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. OK, so um, should we get into how you would organize a vocab notebook? So there are different methods you can use, mm -hmm. and everyone's different, and also vocabulary is different. You may want to uh, sort of organize it in a different way because it will be easier to remember mm -hmm. depending on the type of phrase or word you're exactly. using. You could be organizing based on topic, you mm -hmm. know, jobs, environment, health, or you could be organizing words based on grammar. For example, um, what are those verbs that take an object? Transitive. Transitive and intransitive. Maybe you could have a whole page in your vocab notebook that just has all the transitive verbs mm -hmm. and all the intransitive verbs. Yeah. There, there are many, many different ways you can organize it, and it's all based on your needs. So one of the first ways you can organize is with a chart. Yeah. Now, up on the screen, we're going to be showing you one. Um, and we have three different charts that we can show you. The first one is about jobs, and this is showing you a very useful but basic chart you can be using. Verb, adjective, adverb, noun, and noun person. So as you learn words in this topic, you'll just add them to this chart. Yeah. And this makes it a lot easier because instead of learning four different words, they all have similar meanings because they have the same root. Yeah, and you'll, you'll have that connection there. Now, just be aware that there are some words which will, will not have a, a version of each of these things. Some verbs may not have an adjective form, mm -hmm. for example. So just fill in uh, the words as you go. And when you learn a new word in, in your reading, put it in uh, to the chart and then go and Google it. In good uh, online dictionaries, you can find synonyms, well, not synonyms, but you can find the different uh, word uh, forms of that particular word. Now, another way that you can organize them is just by topic. So for example, in this next one that we're showing you on the screen, we have um, energy sources. And then most of you guys know some of these. Most of you guys know solar, wind, and hydro. But then geothermal might be a new word, nuclear, coal-fired, natural gas. Now, we, and you can put them all here, and when you see one, you know that it's connected to the others. You know yeah. that it is a power source, yeah. and that you can probably use them in very similar ways. Definitely. This is absolutely great for things like speaking, because you can kind of guess and uh, predict common topics that might come up. Also, for your writing, because the same thing, you can come up with some really nice vocabulary to do with lots of different topics. Yes, that's very true. If, if, you, if you have a speaking that you're working on, yeah. just make a page for vocabulary part of that speaking. Perfect. Great Perfect. idea, yeah. Phil. You're well, a genius. Yeah, I'm full of these ones. If only you were better organized. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next one there. Um, so just as another example, we could talk about, let's say, animals. And we could um, arrange it by the name of the animal, the baby animal. Uh, perhaps the, the meat that we refer to it, mm -hmm. oh. and uh, the group name for that animal, for, exa for example, a herd of cattle, and uh, where they live, the habitat. So there's lots of information you can add to a simple word like cow. Yes, a herd of cows. Yeah. Or, ah, oh, did you see that cute baby calf? I can't, eat to eat so I can't wait to eat some veal. 
Damn. Monster. You monster, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather have beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is just one way that you can organize your vocab in your notebook. Another interesting way is to come up with a picture dictionary. Now, yeah. we have some beautiful picture dictionaries that we want to show you. And we've actually shown you the evolution of some picture dictionaries. Just be aware that we paid a professional artist a lot of money for this. I did not draw this by myself. <laughs> so on screen, you will see my beautiful artwork about animals. Can't, we're going to give you a minute to pause and see if you can guess what these animals are. Leave it in the comments down below which ones you got right and yeah. which ones you got wrong. OK, so uh, I'm Paul's. And these are the animals that I thought I was drawing. <laughs> Finally, going along with this one, and it, again, guys, remember, in the comments down below, tell us which ones you got right and wrong from his beautiful, beautiful drawings that all <laughs> look very similar to each other. Um, it's a skill. <laughs> it's a skill. It's a, very, it's a great skill. You're a very talented artist. Yeah. Um, now, finally, we're going to show you some idioms. So, this third picture is the final evolution of this picture dictionary, where there are some great idioms that are connected to these animals. So, uh, going around, uh, curiosity killed the cat, or a cat fight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let sleeping dogs lie, to be as sick as a dog, mm -hmm. uh, to have a memory like an elephant, mm. a phrase, yeah. Uh, as quiet as a mouse, to be as quiet as a mouse. Um, as hungry as a horse, to stick your head in the sand, to have a whale of a time. And honestly, for giraffe, I couldn't think of one. So I put in some uh, cockney rhyming slang. Are you having a giraffe? <laughs> Are you having a laugh? <laughs> and the last one about rabbits to something like bunnies. Please don't leave a comment about what that means. Yeah, if you know what that is. <laughs> Firstly, probably don't use it in your IELTS exam. <laughs> but if you're going to the UK or the USA, you're probably going to need to learn that one. <laughs> OK, so um, I was not the only artist that we, uh, we hired. <laughs> Michael also had a go. And uh, I, I want you guys, just like before, take a gander, take a look at these, and see if you can guess the hobbies. Pause and see how many you can guess. And unpause. So uh, before I give you the names of all of these hobbies, I want you guys to see on the left and the right which one looks better. I hope you guys said the ones on the right because the ones on the left were all in one color. It's very lazy. It's very ugly. I don't want to look at it's this. It's not beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Disgusting. Terrible. How dare you, Teacher Michael? Now. Um, the ones on the right, I use many different colors, and it makes it more attractive, easier to look at. Um, so, now let's see how well you guys did. Zing! These are what all of the hobbies are. If you missed one, please let us know down below. And also, if you didn't know what any of these words were, also let us know down below, and we will answer and tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, as you guys can see, these are all pretty common ones, but... Unfortunately, it doesn't really tell you how to use these words, and it doesn't tell you collocations. So, in this third one, ding, you can see that I have added a lot more information. I've added good collocations that you can use with the words. So, for example, in the first one, play golf, pretty common, and then suck at golf. Do you yeah. suck at golf? Well, um, I'm not an American, so I don't use this term. No, I'm from a family of golfers. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm an extremely good golfer, although I spend most of my time in the 19th hole. Next, we have swimming, and the opposite, drowning. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, kind of a connected thing. Uh, one of the biggest uh, pronunciation errors I ever heard with my students was instead of saying I'm thinking they say I'm sinking I'm sinking <laughs> and if you are sinking all the time you probably will drown maybe it's very shallow water yeah <laughs> <laughs> next up we have diving now this is a bit tough because you can say go diving but we only use that with scuba diving yeah so that's a slightly different sport yeah. right 
If you're diving into a swimming pool, you just say diving. Yeah. Now, a good collocation would be practice diving, and then you would say, I dive, and I was on my school's diving team. Mm -hmm. So again, adding this extra information shows you how to use it correctly. This is what you guys need to be stealing from your books and from your TV shows and adding to your notebooks so you know how to use it right. If you just write the word, I don't think it's good enough. Yeah. Okay. But those were the main ones. There's a few more that you guys can see, but they're not as important. Sure. And uh, so in addition to doing a picture dictionary, you can also do a mind map. So this is where you're thinking of a topic and you're trying to build up the, the topic in terms of vocabulary and you're mm -hmm. looking at different areas of that topic. So um, I decided to have a look at uh, home mm -hmm. and what you'll see here is my, uh, my mind map is a little bit different to Michael's because I used a different type of pen. I, mm -hmm. I used a, a marker pen I suppose, a felt tipped pen. Um, so I, I spoke about home, I looked at different rooms in the home um, and so, for example, I thought about garden and then connected to garden, I thought about garden shed, mm. uh, bedroom, I, I thought about en suite. Is, is a garden a room? Well, you know, not really a room, but it's kind of, <laughs> it's within that, you know. I think, I think it should be in a different part of your mind map. Really? How dare you? It's my mind, get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually a good point. You guys should be organizing this to your own based on what's useful for you, yeah. right? Not every vocab notebook, not every mind map needs to be the same. Yeah, as long as you remember garden, it doesn't matter where you put it. <laughs> Although it might look weird if it's next to your living room. Anyway, so and in addition, I was adding extra information. I, I thought about types of home, so I went flat, UK English, mm -hmm. uh, apartment, American English. I spoke, I spoke about houses, different types, detached, semi-detached, terrace housing. Fancy. You know. Um, I, I spoke about some verbs that we might use around the home uh, to pay rent, to revise, mm. do that at home, to oh, do DIY. Re revise? Mm. In American English, you can revise a paper, but you renovate a house. Oh no, um, I, to revise as in like schoolwork. Yeah, I would revise for an exam at home. Ah, is that review? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you not say revise? No. Oh, well, we, we only use revise as a synonym for edit. This is, I mean, this guy, this is a reason to subscribe to the channel. This channel is so good that even Michael's learning English from <gasps> it. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just perfect. <laughs> um, so in addition to, to verbs, I, I thought about adjectives I might use to talk about my home. So affordable, comforting, relaxing. And also just some nouns, uh, utility bills, um, accommodation, mortgage, uh, insurance, things like that. Yeah. Now, there is one way that this chart could be better. First of all, it's great because it's beautiful, it's well organized. Even though Phil made it, it's still well organized. But <laughs> the thing is, the, they're not really showing, ex they, there are some good collocations, but there aren't sentences showing how it's used. Yeah. This was also a problem with my own mind map. If we look over here, we can see jobs, people, verbs, phrases, and idioms. As you can see, it's entirely complete, and there's nothing missing. There's a lot of white space <laughs> there. But the thing is, like, this might be day one, and then in the next couple of weeks, you might add to it as you go through. Exactly. Yeah. That's, a great, that's a great point, Phil. That's yeah. a great point, Phil. Well, thanks very much, Michael. Now, there is one more thing that I would do to make these more effective, which is when you're making a mind map, one thing that I always make my students do is I have them use different colors, not based on categories, but I have them use different colors based on words they already know and new words that they're learning. So this is a great exercise you can do at home where if you have a topic that you know you're going to learn vocabulary for, you write down your mind map and you do it all from memory. Don't use your phone, don't use a dictionary, write it all in pencil. Then when you start to study that vocabulary, add new words in a new color. So it's really clear what the new words are. Yeah, cool. Yes. Definitely. Okay. So that just, uh, gave me a thought also because a, a common er error that my students have is spelling. 
Mm. So uh, when you come across words, especially if uh, you have a teacher who's correcting things for you, if there are words that you keep spelling wrong, this is the only time I would say create a list of words mm -hmm. and then just do your own spelling bee, as my American cousins would say. Yes. And just practice the spelling. Uh, everyone has their own little issues, uh, even native speakers. Mm -hmm. There are just some words that are just tricky for us to spell. And if you practice them, then you won't uh, lose out in the exam. You could have a whole page in your notebook for words that are difficult to spell. Yeah. And then you can just review that before you go to bed. You know, vocabulary books are the best way to cure insomnia. Yeah. Even better than sleeping pills. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So that has been uh, our tips on creating a notebook. And really, if you do do this, if you make the effort to create your own notebook based on your own study habits and your needs, then you're going to learn vocabulary much more effectively. It's so true. It's so true. And you don't need a lot of time. If you just spend 10 minutes every day, 20 minutes every day, yeah. you will see a huge change in your vocabulary. Yeah. So because you know we care about you, we want you to do the best that you can in the arts, we've created a uh, ready-made notebook for you, a digital version. So uh, it's based on a Google Sheet, and you can go and get it off our website, which is theiltsgrind.com slash notebook. And there's a link in the description. It will take you over there. All you have to do is just copy that onto your own computer, on your own Google Drive, and you're ready to go. And we've got some examples in there already for you. And uh, we'll be adding to that as time goes by. All right, guys. By now, we have talked about the importance of creating a vocabulary notebook, how to learn vocabulary more effectively, and what you should be doing. Good luck, guys. This has been Michael. And I've been Phil. You've been watching the Arts Grind. See you next time. Make sure you subscribe, because you're not going to have much more, much more videos coming out like this. And so we'll see true. you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.